Hello everybody, my name is Greg Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of TechView Snop. And today I'm doing another video on Event Viewer. I forgot to add a couple things to my last video. My last video is talking about how to find the blue screen of death, the actual code, so you can research what caused it. But as far as things go, today I'm going to talk about how to find the uh, last reboot. Uh, so say for example if you're working on someone's computer and um, they're telling you one thing and you know it's something else but you need proof behind you to say hey you didn't reboot your computer then um, this is pretty much going to tell you and yes your computer actually does log when you last reboot and the second thing I'm going to show you is how to actually attach events to or uh, uh, attach task to the events and that way if you're in some type of environment maybe um, you're in a household and you're in charge of all the computers you can probably X computer maybe a child's computer or whatever to email you when something goes wrong so that way you don't have to worry about them emailing you or say your IT person in a corporation the same thing happens if um, some problem happens every so often maybe a video card or something like that happens uh, where it goes out then you want it to email you or send a script out or do something so do whatever task for uh, whatever event that happened but anyways let's jump into a quick personal advertisement and that way you know how to support my channel you can help it grow better and quicker than i can ever do just on my own Thank you for sticking around during this quick personal advertisement and if you want to help us out at TechView Snelp in the TechView Snelp YouTube channel then there are several easy and quick ways to do it. First off there is a fan fund on the YouTube channel itself I'm, I'm not really going to talk too much about it it's, it's kind of a new feature but if you want to check it out then go ahead and click the top tech views and help icon. And also that will take you to our channel itself where you check out our other videos, subscribe, and you can also share our stuff. So if you want to help us out, the easiest and the quickest way to do it is simply just by subscribing, liking, commenting, and also more importantly, sharing the uh, videos and, and uh, just turn off the ad block as you're watching the videos and make sure advertisements are allowed to go up. Now, other ways that you can help us out is on the bottom left you can click on the PayPal button and that will take you to our PayPal link where you can donate a one-time fee for the PayPal on the right side is the Patreon and um, that's a monthly thing so if you want to donate monthly then you can go there in the middle is the uh, Disney which is which owns Maker Studio and if you have a YouTube channel and want to get partnered up then you can click that and if he accepted then whatever maker would get uh, out of the cut I actually get a little bit of that and you still get to keep whatever revenue as as before but it also helps me out because whatever maker studio would get I would get a little bit of that each and every time and it helps me build up enough money to get labs and stuff rolling on but anyways, let's uh, take you back to whatever video that this is, and hopefully you enjoy it. Welcome back. Now, for anyone who hadn't seen my previous video, basically you need to go down to start and pick computer management or event viewer. If you're on Windows 8, then just go to Windows 8 thing to try. And I, I think Windows 10, it has the stuff, um down in the start like 107 so just go here right click go to um, computer management or event viewer or just focus on event viewer right now it takes a few seconds to come up all right so came up now what we do is <coughs> go to windows logs and try to find whatever event so let's just go in systems real quick. It doesn't really matter which. Um, let's start with making a task that goes with an event. So 
Uh, this deals with group policies. I, pointless event. So what I can do is just do a uh, task, uh, attach a task by right-clicking the event so, and, then, and clicking attach task to this event. And then I can tell it what the task is um, and uh, go a little bit further. And it used to be that you can send emails and all that stuff, but now you need to start a new program. What I'll advise is if you are uh, want out to use, so for example, if, um, I don't know, let's do this scenario with computer. Say you are a head of household or whatever with computers, and you got a child with a computer. They ain't gonna know how to, you know, do all the stuff you need them to do. So what you can easily have the computer do with some third party software is screenshot and with a script and just write out a basic script and have the screen, uh, screen saved um, and sent out to you by email so it shows you what the screen was showing at the time the problem happened and maybe a little bit of information on the problem um, maybe in the subject line the actual error and all the other stuff and that way you know what's going on what they were looking at at the time and so on and so on same thing will happen in a business environment probably it happened a little bit more so because in a home environment you got a little bit of privacy in a business environment there is no privacy because you're using com company computers and um, if you know you're doing facebook on company computers that's all time theft that's actually illegal for those you don't know and um basically right here this uh this is how you do it you just need to start um just click the uh script so you just write out your script save it to their computer and uh, what i will suggest is write it in a way that it doesn't pop anything up so they don't know any of the wires or not because you're trying to be sneaky but because you don't want to disturb them doing something so say for example they're writing a paper you don't want command prompt to pop up and and stuff that happened you want it to happen in the background so they continue writing their paper um and then so on so on and go through that and there you go so that's a pretty easy way to do um task like that you can also create other tasks um i i'll just go to task manager or task scheduler and uh, Oops, sorry about that, not task manager, but task scheduler. And I like doing this um, for servers and stuff. Is you can create a task and tell it to open programs, minimize other programs, do certain things. So, for example, on my home server, which is basically an old computer that I convert into a server, I actually have a video on that. It's how to convert a old Windows computer into a home server. Very cheap. In fact, by just, you know, wiping all the data so you know you have no viruses and and having it where the, uh, you know, you got backup stuff on it, all the other encryption stuff and all the other. Well, in case if the backup stuff doesn't automatically come up and also in case if the uh, security camera stuff doesn't come up automatically, I have it where it automatically opens it up here and that way I know for a fact one way or another if, if software doesn't open it for whatever reason which happens this the Windows actual stuff will open it and um, you can set delay and all the other stuff Just a little tidbit so uh, what was the oh um reboots so one of the things is is what will happen once in a while is you want to ask someone if, if you're working more on other people's computers uh i don't know if it's just that people are ashamed or stupid but i think it's just the latter too that they're stupid because people are people but anyways what will happen is people just flat out lie so um i've seen it in fact when I was doing the, uh, as, as a IT consultant for the voting booth, I asked the person straight up when I walked in, do you got everything hooked up? Because 
I was going to hook up everything. They said, yeah. I said, uh, does he have any problems? No. Turns out they got the USB plugged in. I think it was a USB 4 printer plugged into the Ethernet port. Yeah. Yeah, you did have a problem. And yeah, I know because it doesn't fit in the Ethernet port. Uh, so anyways, what uh, what you ha have once in a while is stupid things like, did you restart your computer? Is it plugged in? All those things, they have to be asked and you get annoyed when a person on the airline asks you these things or your IT person asks you things. But this is why. It's because most of the time, that's the problem. So, um, what happens is sometimes you'd say, did you reboot your computer? Did you do this? Did you do that? Well, you can find out if they actually really did it. So they'll say, yeah, yeah, I did. And if you're in Active Directory, it's a little bit easier. If, it's, if you're not, you have to go to their computer. And um, you can just go to the log, a system log or whatever, depending on what exactly you're looking for. And um, say for something like uh, reboots, uh, 6005, I think think and uh, this is an information log saying last time it was rebooted so right now it's uh, February 15th and we can already see that it's been a little uh, it's, it's been about uh, two days almost two days before this computer was rebooted so uh, and we can see before then we got the day before and then two days before that, a day before, two days before that, so on and so on. So, the, the important thing with this is if someone says, Oh, I rebooted my computer, or I did this, I did that. You can look at it. No, you didn't. And um, if you're an IT person, or even if you're a head of household, you might still have to actually tell the person how to reboot because it can easily be that they like like in that scenario with the voting booth they thought the ethernet was a usb no they th thought wrong majorly wrong on that because they almost damaged the usb but um with this people probably will think that oh i logged off that's considered as reboot no actually turn off the machine and turn it on is reboot or they probably think sleep or hibernation is a reboot no actually turn it off and turn back on either by restart or it'll power off power back on is reboot and um and that, that's that's one thing that you'll find a lot if you're working in this uh field or or even around family members so um uh, real quick uh 6005 is the um, the thing for uh, reboot. But anyways, uh, and, and again, yes, it does actually keep track of that. So, um, it keeps track of it good way. But anyways, uh, if you got any questions or anything, then feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. Also, if, um, if you want to add anything, then go ahead and and I'll, I'll try to help you guys out as quickly as possible. If I missed out on anything, or if you think I should add a little bit more information to this stuff, then feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to see what I can do. Now, if you like this, please leave a like, please subscribe, and please share, and please check out my other videos. More importantly, please share my videos, my channel and stuff, and that way it helps me out and bring people in and they can see. And also, feel free to check out PayPal, the Patreon, and everything else that I got listed. But if you dislike this stuff, then please feel free to leave a dislike, but also tell me why so I can fix it in future videos. Again, this has been Craig Bent, founder of Nautilus Tech for Use and Help, and I hope you have a great day.